All right, all right, all right. This is uh, Jake Pessio with Sabbath Lounge, uh, and uh, I was asked to uh, give my testimony of coming to Torah, coming to the, the knowledge of Torah, and I uh, just wanted to, uh, uh, we'll just jump right in and get started, I guess. So um, my background is, uh, I come from an evangelical background, so uh, uh, in church most of my life, um, uh, my parents were uh, Bible believers, still are, and uh, um, so grew up in a household that was very interested in, in you know, uh, promoting uh, uh, biblical living and and things like that. Uh, uh, not Torah, I would say, but um, uh, more New Testament, new New Covenant kind of biblical belief. So. That's kind of where I started, and uh, I was given a solid foundation in in that, I believe. And uh, uh, so, uh, one of the things that kind of stuck with me early on was that I was warned by my parents that um, that the um, the society that we live in, the world, would uh, come come to me and, and try to talk me out of the, the ways that I was being brought up in and try to tell me that the Bible isn't true and things like that. And so um, I was pretty well, I think, guarded against things that might come against me, against my belief, because uh, like I said, I, I think that's one of the best warnings you can give your children is that there will be people that come and try to take you away from this, um, this belief in, in the Bible and, and, and what it stands for, um, especially in a society like we live in. So, uh, so I kind of started in that, that, that kind of a situation. Um, I've been to, uh, um, Seventh-day Adventist church before and also to, uh, and then, you know, since high school, early high school, I guess, uh, it was evangelical church and that's kind of where I got my, got my biblical teaching. And, uh, so, uh, fast forward to, uh, uh, I get married and, uh, I have, uh, a son and, uh, my wife and I are, you know, feeling like we're doing the the right things and and on the right track. And um, I guess my my Torah walk, I would say, started way back when my sister brought up, "Hey, uh, I don't know that we should be doing Christmas." And so she she kind of backed away from the Christmas and Easter kind of things and. All the while, you know, my wife and I are like, eh, the whole family, we're like, I don't know, I don't know what her problem is, you know, but, you know, it was, it was the standard, well, that's not what it means to me, you know, argument. And apparently that was, that was good enough for me at the time. And so, uh, I probably from there took a couple years before. Uh, my wife and I were like, you know what? There's something to this not doing Christmas thing. And so we kind of started down that path of, well, okay, we're, we're not doing Christmas. We see all the pagan stuff in it. And, you know, that kind of made sense to us. Um, so uh, then through that time, oh, another thing, I'll just uh, backtrack real quick. Uh, um, but kind of all goes together. Uh, my, uh, growing up also, uh, I was very interested in seeking out, the the quote unquote contradictions in scripture and, you know, the, the arguments against, uh, scripture and, uh, seeing how to combat those arguments. So very, uh, interested in the apologetics kind of side of things. So, um, I, I enjoyed that and I wasn't afraid to like look into those things because I had that, that good foundation of, you know, well, I'm not going to stray. So I can look into these things and, and kind of get an idea of what's going to be coming toward me. So, all right. So, uh, in that vein, 
uh, my, uh, I had a question come up that was posed to my wife and I can't remember. I mean, if you ask her or me, you know, you're probably going to get different answers, but, um, I can't remember where exactly the question came from, but suffice to say it was a question that should be for a churched person, something very simple to, to prove out. And so, uh, she went along trying to prove this thing and she's like, eh, it's not as easy to just, here's the verse and it's, it's done. Um, so, uh, she got kind of hung up on that for a little while. And, um, then in the course of, of that kind of jogging her, she went into a women of God study with my sister and, and they were, and this still, we're not really in Torah, but it was, you know, this is kind of the path to finding things. And, um, so she, she's doing this study with my sister and, uh, she starts noticing things at church that are like, eh, that's kind of not exactly biblical and that kind of stuff. So, um, it would be things like, well, so she would say that. And I, I wasn't down for that really. I was, I was willing to listen to what she was saying. Uh, but I wasn't really seeing it that way. Um, so she was kind of interested in kind of leaving the church and I wasn't very supportive of, of doing that. But, um, you know, the more, things she brought up the more it was kind of like yeah i can't really argue with you on that and uh you know it made a lot more sense so um so basically um we kind of filtered out of the church that we were going to and spending more time uh doing our personal like studies and and things like that and um at the time uh you know, she, she, the way she'll tell it on her side of things, because there's a her, there's her story and then there's my story, but uh, and they're they're connected, but uh, different paths at the same time. So it's kind of interesting, but the way Yah works. But she, you know, was kind of coming to these things like, oh, we should be being more biblical in the way we act and and the way we. Uh, present ourselves and things like that and you know she would and i just wasn't seeing the things she was saying and she would uh just praying for me constantly and you know she she's not much of a sleeper she's kind of a night owl and tends to have trouble sleeping but she would she'd be up and i'd be asleep and she'd just be praying and and uh <clears throat> little did we know that was well I mean, she, I didn't realize that this was going on, but she was, you know, she was diligent with it and, and, you know, believing. And, um, so through continued prayer and whatnot, you know, um, uh, we, she had brought up a, uh, that we should be keeping the Sabbath. That's what it was. So, so she goes, we were going to, we had a Memorial Day camp out planned and she's like, hey, uh, oh, I think we should be keeping the Sabbath. And I was like, well, I can't, can't really argue with that. And I mean, it's, it's one of the 10, right? So, um, so we went out on our camp out, our Memorial Day camp out. And I'm like, how we so can we have a fire i don't know how this works so we pretty much spent the day you know reading scripture and resting and, and uh that kind of thing and i was uh i apparently to her i came across as uh, not very uh interested in this stuff and you know kind of off-putting about it but uh on my and in my thought process i was you know testing what what I was getting from her. And, uh, so through that process, you know, we're, 
we were growing and things, but um, she watched a 119 Ministries uh, video called uh, The Lost Sheep. And her and my sister both were like, oh, this is like game changer. And I'm like, I'll listen to it, you know, and see what they're saying. And I got my notebook and I'm taking notes and I'm like, well, you know, that's great. But I got to test these things. I can't, I'm not just going to change everything because I saw this video online. So that's, you know, that's a stepping stone. You know, all, all these things are, are, are just pieces of, of the puzzle. And, you know, once you get a big enough piece of the puzzle, you go, oh, it's, you know, it's a donkey or whatever. <laughs> so in this case, you know, that was a piece of the puzzle. And I, I still didn't see the, the picture, but. Um, we were also at the same time, we were very into, uh, homesteading and, you know, getting our garden going and stuff like that. <clears throat> and so, uh, one of the shows that we found on YouTube was an American homestead. And we loved watching this family go off grid and, and have all their hints and tips about what it even looks like to be off grid. And, uh, this crazy guy on there. Uh, Zach Bauer, he'd always talk about, uh, well, I got this other channel and we talk about stuff on there, but he wouldn't say what it was or he never really brought that stuff in and we're, you know, but, and I'm like, tell him, we're telling our, my sister, you know, Hey, you got to watch this homestead channel. It's pretty cool. And she's like, Oh, I know him. And I watch his other channel. And we're like, Oh, what's this? And so, uh, my wife started watching it and uh, I would catch parts of it here and there, but never really sat down to watch it. And one of the things that uh, struck me was the defining of sin as transgression of the law. And, and that was like the piece of the puzzle that was like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> and so it kind of, that was a big shift for me. And so, um, now, in addition to that, so I'm an engineer by trade and by training, and so uh, I tend to think very analytically and very, uh, 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 well, analytically. Let's go with that. And so uh, I can't just go by, well, this feels good. I'll go with it. It has to, you know, has to line up. And so even with scripture uh and i'm that's one of the things i think is fantastic about scripture it's it's just lines right up and this uh torah movement that we found ourselves walking into just put all those pieces in order and it uh lined everything right up and so uh again you know i'm 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 not going to just change everything on a whim. I got to like kind of prove it to myself as kind of how I work, I guess. Um, so I put together uh, what would later in, you know, our close circles be called the Hebrew hammer. And it's basically an argument that's um, uh, so in the literal sense of the term of what an argument is, it's um, you have a premise or a few premises and then through those premises if you assume they're true then you can come to no other conclusion right you have your premises and your conclusions from those premises so what i ended up drawing up what the final product was of this sitting down and studying this out and and seeing where exactly we're going here um i came up with a it's a valid complex argument so it's valid because if you assume the premises to be true, then you can come to no other conclusion. And then it's complex because there's multiple conclusions in the argument. So, um, so and I figured I would just kind of share that because, you know, that's kind of after I had put this together, I was, I was like, this is it. This is what we're doing. So, um, so uh, the first premise is that we're to try to live as Jesus lived. And so you'll see that all of these are 
verses that you can just turn your Bible to. And uh, so you shouldn't have a problem with what the verse is. Um, the only thing that that would derail this would be I've taken the verse out of context or added meaning or something like that. So, uh, and I would go on after I had created this to share this with people and I'll kind of get into that later. But so first premise were to try to live as Jesus lived. Um, so that's first John two, six. Uh, the second one is that Jesus lived without sin. And I don't think anyone would argue these, these ideas uh, there. I grew up in the church. I'm like, I know I'm going to accept this. So a church person will accept this. Uh, so that's first John three, five. So the conclusion that you can draw from that is that we're to try to live without sin. And I don't think anyone even disagrees with that premise, with that conclusion that we should try to live without sin. So then that key verse that sin is transgression of the law, uh, that's kind of the crux of this. And you'll, uh, and so that's first John three, four, of course. So even the conclusion is biblical verse. Um, And then, so from there, um, we have another conclusion. We're to try to live without transgressing the law. So if we're to try to live as Jesus lived, Jesus lived without sin, sin's transgression of the law. So we're to try to live without transgressing the law. Uh, So then the next premise would be, as he lived, Jesus kept the Father's commandments. And so... Uh, this is John fifteen ten, And so if we're to live as he lived and he kept the father's commandments, then it just leads that uh, we are to try to keep the father's commandments, right? That's the conclusion that you would draw from that. Now, here's the only, uh, the only premise that I don't have a verse to. It's more... It's more a seeing what I would say against myself because growing up in this, I know what arguments I would make against it. So uh, so the next one is some will say we're to keep Jesus's commandments. So that would be the argument against what the, the conclusion I just drew. Well, you will we're to keep Jesus's commandments, not, uh, not Yahweh's commandments, basically. Uh, so then uh, Jesus's commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So uh, that's several places. Uh, Matthew 22, 37 to 39 is, is the one I have listed, but that's a couple other places, synoptic gospels and all. So yeah, uh, those, are the, those are the two commandments, love, love God and love your neighbor. So... Uh, we're to try. We're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Right? That's the conclusion you can draw. Uh, but then the next premise is the love of God is that we keep His commandments, and that's First John five three. So I'm essentially proving to myself: okay, yes, the commandments we're to keep are Yah's commandments, not just these two commandments that Jesus gives. Um, so then the conclusion from that, we're to try to keep God's commandments, right? Yahweh's commandments and, and not just these two commandments. Um, so then the ultimate conclusion that can be drawn in this argument is that we're to try to live sinless by not transgressing the law and keeping God's commandments because we love him, right? Remember that is the, uh, that is love God, right? Keep the commandments. So, uh, so that's what those premises and conclusions, intermediate conclusions lead to, is that one conclusion of uh, we're to try to live sinless by not transgressing the law and keeping God's commandments because we love him. And so that's kind of was my proof to myself that, okay, this is now I can transform the way I've been living and and turn it into uh, a biblical living. So, 
Um, now, this doesn't work. <laughs> Not everyone sees that. And, and basically what I tend to say is that there are three things that are required. This, these are the three things that I required um, in order to see this. And one of them is uh, it's Yahweh that opens eyes and unstops ears. The second is I have to be willing to admit that I was wrong in the, the way I've been interpreting scripture and the way I've been living. And then the third thing is I have to be willing to change the way I've been living. So if all those three components come together, which they did for me, um, then I'm, I'm sold. It's, uh, that's what it takes to see Torah. Yahweh opens eyes and unstops ears. Uh, I have to admit I'd been wrong and change the way I'm living to conform to what Yah wants instead of what I want. And so those were kind of the, the big stepping stones that kind of led me into uh, noticing that we should be keeping the Torah. Um, and so, uh, of course, you know, I had a uh, Bible study group that I would go to at work uh, on our lunch break. We'd all get together and uh, the maintenance guys down on the floor would hold a uh, Bible study, and I met a guy that at a wild game dinner actually, and he was like, "Hey, uh, you work here? Why do?" And I didn't realize we worked together, but uh, you know, big company and everything. But he's like, "Yeah, you should come over to Bible study." So I had been doing that for some time now, and now I'm seeing this, and I'm like, and then uh, I get asked to. Uh, lead one of the Bible studies when the main guy is going to be out. And I'm like, Oh, sure. You know, I had filled in before, but I was like, I'll just take this and I'll show people and everyone will go, oh, of course. And, you know, everyone will be on my team all of a sudden, uh, you know, everyone, we'll all be on the same page. And then, uh, it just, anyone who, who's tried that knows it's, that's not how it works. And so, uh, yeah, faced opposition from, you know, my Bible study team and, and we had already been out of church. We kind of snuck out of church and, and so we didn't really get, uh, anything from that end, but, you know, family and stuff like that. But, uh, that, that kind of came, came back at us, but, uh, can't say some of it wasn't our own faults. You know, you, you uh, when you come to this understanding, it's all you want to do. And so you start, that's, that's your entertainment is, Ooh, let's uh, read some more Bible. Ooh, let's uh, listen to another teaching. Ooh, let's test that teaching. And you know, that'll be fun. And so that's kind of how we lived for a long time. And so our learning curve was like quite steep. And so it left people that weren't around us all the time to be like, Hey, well, all of a sudden you're these different people. It's like, well, it was, you know, it, at its progression but uh so it's kind of like that and uh, found out that you know you just show up and you dump all this seed that's not, that's not how y'all plants that's not how gardens get planted you don't just take your big sack of seed and dump it out all over the earth it doesn't matter if it's good soil or not it's you know it's, the seed's not going to grow from that but uh, uh thankfully you know my wife and i kind of she came to this kind of understanding before me, but you know, I got there. So, uh, we're on the same page with that, which is a blessing. And, uh, uh, I just can't imagine how hard it is for people because, uh, you know, I, I witness it in, you know, my, my friend groups too, where only certain people, you know, one side of the equation is, is seeing this and the other side isn't, and it's a struggle. And, it's hard to deal with, but, um, so I do realize how blessed I am that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to be with, uh, you know, walking this out with someone that's, you know, my oneness and can help meet me through this, you know, uh, so we can work together and, uh, you know, raise our kids, you know, uh, just 
who love Yah and love his ways and and want to do the right things and uh so uh so that's pretty much it i guess i mean that was me before torah and then my coming to torah and then after the dumping of all the seed and realizing how dumb that was and uh i'm not sure necessarily how to do it differently but but maybe that wasn't the best way although the benefit that i saw from that was i got to argue these things that i was learning i got to express them and be challenged by people that didn't think the same way and so i was able to uh hone those those arguments into something that i can have a conversation with people with so um and i ki- i guess i kind of liken it to uh uh when you come when you come into torah and i I've, I've seen this a lot of places a lot of things sabbath is the first thing that people see people start doing and then you know when you're blessed and when you uh uh um accept the call in something small right then yah will grow you more things and more things that you could be responsible for. So I see it kind of like that. And then also how um, you can, you, you grow from there. You uh, get, get the understanding of, you know, this is, this is how it's going to work. So, yeah. So I guess I would just say that uh, um, coming to Torah is, uh, has really, uh, opened my eyes to to more of the scripture. It's made things come alive to me and and my family, and uh, just opens up so much that you haven't seen in scripture before. So it's uh, and uh, it's like meeting Yeshua for the first time, you know, and uh, meeting him all over again. It's it's almost like being born again, right? So uh, just changes your perspective. Ah, yes. Uh, one of the things I was going to say is, so uh, I kind of like in the, when you come into Torah, it's very similar to what happens with Paul because he's struck and the first thing he does is he goes back to Arabia, which is M- Mount Sinai. And so he goes back to the beginning and has to, he spends his time alone relearning things and uh and then his he's got the renewing of the mind going and then he can come back and bring that truth to to the people that he's he's meant to bring it to and so i think that happens too when you come to torah you have to have that return to mount sinai where it all began uh uh you know go back to the beginning of your bible and and get an understanding you know you can't really know what paul's saying until you've read what paul's read so uh you'll hear that a lot on on the sabbath lounge channel we'll talk about that a lot but um yeah so that's kind of my journey and uh again this is jake pesci with sabbath lounge and uh thank you for the opportunity to share with you